Episode 8 of Ahsoka is a terrible finale to a terrible show, filled with nothing but stupid contrivances, awful choreography, bad dialogue, dull characters, inconsistent pacing, and worst of all, this show was utterly pointless. That's right, after 8 entire episodes, nothing has been accomplished. And is anyone really surprised at this point? Dave Filoni has shown everybody time and again that he is completely incompetent. He's even worse than a broken clock because that at least gets something right twice a day. Ahsoka is a masterclass in how not to write a show, as it's so shit that even the actors have checked out with their lifeless performances. And why wouldn't they be? They don't have an actual character to play, only empty husks devoid of personality. Let's start with Ahsoka. She was a boring Jedi with no charisma, and by the end of the show, she is still a boring Jedi with no charisma, but now she wears white clothing. Sabine, who starts the show off as an asshole with no force powers, and by the end of it, she is still an asshole but now can use force powers without any training. Ezra is a constant damsel in distress that needs to be saved at all times by a woman. Hera is a smug asshole general who believes that the rules just don't apply to her, and she's right as she faces zero consequences for disobeying direct orders and getting two pilots killed and nobody even mentions this. Hu Yang is just there. Thrawn is a complete retard and all his plans fail. The only time he gets any results is when he has to ask the Harry Potter witches for help because the writers love emasculating their male characters. They simply do not care that this undermines Thrawn as a villain. Balin did fuck all this season, Shin did fuck all this season, and we never find out who Morgan is or why she was so fanatically loyal to Thrawn, so much so that she was even willing to die for him. Nope, let's just ignore all of that, because silly things like character motivations just aren't important in Ahsoka. No, the show would rather waste time on cheap meaningless cameos because they know that brain-dead talentless fucks are gonna clap at anything they put on the screen. So why the fuck is the company going to even try to make anything good if these fucking clapping seals are going to lap up anything they shit down their throats? Anyway, let's not waste any more of our lives on this piece of shit and break down this fucking mess of an episode. It begins with Thrawn, who after completing the cargo transfer makes the absolute terrible decision to not take a ship into orbit to dock with the giant space cock ring. No, instead he decides to bring it down to the planet where Ahsoka can reach it, because if he had done that, then there is no way Ahsoka, Sabine and Ezra would have made it to the ship. So in order for the episode to work, they had to make such an obviously stupid decision for the plot to move forward. So what does he do next? Well, he only sends two TIE Fighters to deal with them, despite having a fuck ton more. You would think that after failing your last attempt, you wouldn't take any more chances and would respond with overwhelming force. But no, Thrawn doesn't ever learn from his mistakes and believes that two is enough. Why? So the witches decide to have Morgan join Gryffindor, and her welcome present is getting inked and two black eyes. They also manifest green flames and conjure a magical sword out of thin fucking air. Seriously, is there anything these witches cannot do? Why don't they just open a portal like Doctor Strange does, or is that the one power they don't have? So we cut back to the main trio, and despite the fact that Thrawn is about to escape, they don't seem to be in any sort of hurry to stop him. In fact, they are just waiting for Ezra to build his lightsaber, because despite saying that he only needed the Force, well it turns out that he was full of shit and now needs a lightsaber. Ah. So as he builds his fucking ugly lightsaber, Hu Yang says that Sabine's family was killed and Ahsoka didn't want to teach her because she was so full of anger, Anger which she has never displayed and a dead family she has never mentioned. My question is why are we only learning about this very important piece of information now in the finale when there is no time to address it? This feels like it was just added in at the last minute because the writers forgot that they set this up in episode 1 before dropping it to waste time on the gay as fuck space whales. So as Ahsoka begins to have a conversation with Sabine, she reveals that she knows what Sabine did, and Sabine is shocked by this because she never had any intention of telling the group that she betrayed them or the galaxy. This bitch was just hoping that nobody would find out what she did, because she's a horrible cunt. But despite causing this entire situation, just like Hera, she is immediately forgiven, because of course, why should there be any consequences for the women making selfish choices at the expense of others? I mean, they're only supposed to be the heroes of the show, 
so they end up getting attacked by the two TIE Fighters, and in only a few shots they do more damage to Ahsoka's ship than every other time she has been attacked. Why is that now the case? Well, that's because the plot said so. The ship is also hovering above the useless crab convoy that keeps following them around for no reason. Ever since they met Sabine and Ahsoka, they have been attacked by bandits, stormtroopers, and now TIE Fighters. Why the fuck are they still here? Well, it's to give Ahsoka and Ezra a job of holding up the ship as Sabine goes full Imperial Japan and kamikazes into the two TIE Fighters. This should not have happened as the TIE Fighters are small, agile, and more importantly, the pilots can very easily see Sabine coming right at them very slowly. It looks like they just let themselves be taken out, probably because they no longer want to exist in the Star Wars universe, and I don't blame them. This goes on to cause Sabine to crash the ship, but she just walks away from it completely unharmed like she does everything else. So after almost being killed, only now do these dumb fucks realise that they should probably hurry up and actually try to stop Thrawn. So they take their walks, and of course, Ezra is riding bitch behind Sabine. Why exactly is it that the people at Lucasfilm never seem to get tired of constantly emasculating their male characters in every single show they make? We cut to Thrawn and he assumes that the party are travelling on foot. Now the smart thing to do would be to send more TIE Fighters to go and finish them off, as they have demonstrated clearly that they are effective. But this is Thrawn we are talking about, the man just simply refuses to win no matter how many opportunities he is presented. What he ends up doing instead is sending troopers to wait at the bottom of the spire. You're absolutely fucking useless. So as the group approaches the spire, another throwaway comment is made about how Thrawn found and awakened the Harry Potter witches. Again, another important piece of background information is just dropped randomly and nothing is done with it. How the fuck did Thrawn know about them? Why were they asleep? And what happened to their kingdom? Pointless background stories that will never get answered. The three of them travel towards the giant space cock ring, but are still very far away. We then have a very brief scene where Morgan is ordering the troops instead of Thrawn, and when we cut back to the trio, they have somehow travelled from the top of this mountain to right underneath the Star Destroyer in a matter of moments. The ship opens fire, and even though these are two very close together targets running in a straight line, they simply cannot hit either of them. The fact they can't hit them is bad enough, but they also know they are heading towards the entrance, so why don't they just aim at where they are going instead? Well, due to the massive incompetence of the Empire, the quote-unquote heroes somehow manage to get past all of that and open the door to the Spire. They then end up getting attacked by a lot of stormtroopers, and we see some terrible blocking by the group. Remember Kiadi Mundi? He very quickly got gunned down by far less people, and that is exactly what should happen. It's all about surface area. You simply should not be able to block that many shots coming at you all at once. What follows next is a poorly choreographed action scene, which finishes with Ahsoka doing a cringe pose. Once again, Thrawn demonstrates to all of us that he is a brain-dead retard, so he ends up doing what he always does and begs the Night Mothers for help. Luckily for him, they can also use necromancy as well, because of course they fucking can. At this point, it is becoming easier to point out which powers they don't have, so they go on to make zombies out of the stormtroopers and attack the three of them. They have lightsabers, the best possible weapon you could use on zombies, and yet they do not dismember them, they do not hit them in the head, instead they constantly stab and slash them in the stomach, which they already know is fucking useless and yet they keep doing it. As the trio head up to the tower, Thrawn has forgotten to close all of the doors on the way up, which ends up being pretty convenient for the group, as Ezra ends up using them to slow down the zombies. Also, these three are on foot, and yet they manage to run up what looks to be hundreds of floors in a matter of minutes. Since every single one of Thrawn's plans has ended up in complete failure, he decides once again to ask Morgan for help in buying time for him and the Harry Potter witches to escape. Morgan has only one fucking job, which is to stall them, so what does she do? Well, she just lets Sabine and Ezra walk right past her, only stopping Ahsoka. 
because of course she does, no one in the show is intelligent. But that's okay, because there's already two dead zombie stormtroopers guarding the bridge. Now, the quickest and best way of dealing with them would be by having Ezra push them off the building. But if they actually did that instead of stupidly fist fighting them, then Sabine would not have been able to randomly just unlock the force without any training. So they end up winning the fight, but the Star Destroyer begins to take off. Not willing to risk her own life even to make up for her betrayal, she tells Ezra to jump for it, as she wants him to take the risk of potential death. She also says that she will be able to push him with her newly acquired force powers. Ezra makes it to the ship, which should be impossible because it's way too far even with a force push. The stormtroopers are watching him do this and they don't even fire, nor do they close the hangar doors. No, they just let him climb up and kill one of them, while Sabine somehow manages to snipe the other one with a pistol miles away and no visual aid. Right. The zombie troopers no longer act like zombies and manage to blow their way through the doors that Thrawn forgot to close. They end up forcing Ahsoka back onto the platform and surround her on all sides. Now for some reason Morgan continues to have a sword fight with her, when all she has to do to win is disengage and allow the stormtroopers to open fire. But of course she doesn't because everybody in the show is a complete fucking moron. So Sabine comes to the rescue and the actress shows us just how terrible she is at the fight choreography. Now despite having dozens of people shoot at her, they can only seem to land hits on Sabine's plot armor, even with her head fully exposed. Ahsoka then goes on to kill Morgan and Thrawn now decides to target the base of the Spire. Hu Yang shows up with the shuttle to rescue the pair of them and despite the fact that Thrawn can easily see him doing this, he doesn't change targets, he just continues firing at the base of the Spire. What an idiot! So they end up going into orbit with Ahsoka giving chase, and for some reason all of the mines that were surrounding the planet are no longer there. Anyway, Thrawn then ends up jumping back to the original galaxy, trapping Sabine and Ahsoka in this one. Now Ezra is trapped on the Star Destroyer filled with stormtroopers and Harry Potter witches that can find him whenever they want. So how exactly does he get off the ship? Well, the show just cuts away and he is already on a shuttle, heading towards the New Republic fleet. There are so many problems with this. How was Ezra able to steal a ship without anyone noticing? Why didn't Thrawn destroy the ship when it left the hangar? How did Ezra know where to find a New Republic fleet when he has been stuck in another galaxy for 10 years? And why did Ezra choose to leave his ship wearing a full Stormtrooper outfit as he could have very easily been shot? It's a dramatic reveal that is meant purely for the audience, not the characters. And so, the episode ends with our characters heading in different directions. Thrawn is heading towards the planet Dathomir, because of course we need even more retarded witches. Shin for some reason didn't head back to Thrawn, nor did she go look for her master. No, she decided to join the Not Samurai, who even though she only met them a few hours earlier, have already accepted her into the clan, probably as leader. Balin is standing atop a statue from Lord of the Rings, and the final scene is of Ahsoka and Sabine stuck with the crab people. Sabine points out that Thrawn got away, but Ahsoka says that's fine, because so too did Ezra. Are you fucking retarded? Yes, let's just ignore all of the death and suffering that is now going to happen because of Sabine's actions. Because by selfishly choosing to save one life, she has doomed millions, if not billions more. Good job, Sabine, you fucking cunt. And of course, it would not be Disney Star Wars if we didn't finish on a fucking pointless cameo, as Force Ghost Anakin is watching Ahsoka. Why does Anakin simply refuse to visit either of his children? Is he simply afraid that he will have to pay 30 years of child support, or does he simply not give a shit? At the very least, he should tell Luke all about Palpatine and Exegol. If not for him, then for the sole reason of preventing his sacrifice at the end of Return of the Jedi from becoming completely meaningless. Anyway, after all that fucking nonsense, Ahsoka comes to an end. What a fucking waste of time. Each episode was just as shit as the last, and yet somehow felt worse. Dave Filoni didn't even try to explain this to a new audience. No, it's simply your fault for not having watched 10 seasons of Clone Wars and Rebels in order to understand just exactly who the fuck these people are. Ahsoka is about as fun as scraping your ball sack across sandpaper. Star Wars is never going to be fixed because after Ahsoka we have the Acolyte, which is somehow going to be even more feminist than this show. So that was the season finale of Ahsoka. It's a piece of shit.